Hi, uh, I'm Peter Zanik from Hungary. I work for, I work for uh, One Identity, and today I will talk about uh, Syslog NG version 4, uh, which was released just a couple of months ago. So, uh, first let me give you a quick overview. Uh, I will try to uh, define what is logging and what is Syslog NG. Then I will give you a quick retrospective of uh, Syslog NG version 3 then uh, explain uh, what is new in Syslog NG version 4, and finally I will give a few tips uh, when you plan to upgrade from version th f uh, 3 to version 4. So, first of all, uh, what is logging? It's a recording of events uh, on a computer. For example, uh, you can see an SSH login message on the screen. So, uh, what is Syslog NG? It's an enhanced uh, logging daemon with a uh, strong focus on portability and high performance central log collection. It was originally developed in C, but now it can be extended in Java and Python as well. Uh, you might ask uh, why uh, central logging uh, was emphasized in this de description. It's one of the main features of Syslog NG, uh, and it's really important in any signs of IT environment. First of all, it's ease of use. Uh, if you have central logging, then uh, you can uh, have a single place to check your log messages instead of uh, trying to log in to uh, tens or uh, even thousands of uh, hosts to figure out what happened on your network. It's also availability, so if the sending machine is down, you can still check the log messages and figure out what happened. And it's also security. Uh, logs are uh, available even uh, if the uh, sender machine is compromised, and you, you, you can uh, see uh, the unchanged log, me log messages uh, there. Uh, Syslog NG has four major roles. It can collect log messages, it can process log messages, filter them, and finally store them either locally or forward uh, the log messages somewhere. Mm, the first role is uh, data collection. Uh, it can collect uh, system and application logs together, uh, which means that uh, they can provide quite interesting contextual data for either side. It has a wide variety of uh, platform-specific sources, devlog, uh, the, the Linux journal, Sunstreams, uh, some NetBSD-specific ch changes, and so on. Uh, as a central log collector, it can speak all of the uh, different uh, syslog protocol variants over the network, the legacy or the BSD, or BSD uh, syslog protocol, which can be ident identified by RFC 3164, or the new or uh, RFC 5424 uh, syslog protocol over UDP, TCP, and encrypted connections. Uh, it can also uh, collect log messages or practically any kind of text data from applications through files, sockets, pipes, application output, and so on. And the best of all, that if uh, there is no uh, input driver for a source uh, you want to collect log messages from, then you can easily extend uh, Syslog NG in Python. You can write an HTTP source, a Kafka source, um, or whatever you need. The next uh, system, uh, role of Syslog NG is uh, log processing. You can use it to uh, classify, normalize, and structure logs with various built-in parsers. Mm, we have the CSV parser, pattern DB parser, JSON parser, and so on. And you can easily combine these into a lot more complex parsers as well. You can also rewrite log messages, and you, don't, you do, not, do not have to think about falsifying log messages, but for example, anonymization is required by, by lots of uh, compliance stuff. You can mm, enrich uh, log messages, for example, using the GIP parser. You can add geolocation to IP addresses or uh, cre uh, create additional uh, name value pairs. Uh, based on the message content. 
And finally, you can also reformat log messages using templates. So if uh, the destination where you are sending log messages needs to have a specific format like JSON formatting or, uh, or the date in the ISO date format and so on, then uh, user, you can easily reformat your log messages as necessary. And uh, if none of these uh, are good enough for you, uh, you can easily uh, extend syslogng using uh, Python. For example, um, enrich your log messages uh, from a database or um, even use it for filtering, which brings us to our next topic, which is filtering. Uh, filtering within syslogng has two main uses. Um, most people are focused on discarding surplus log messages. Like in, in a normal case, you do not want to store debug level log messages. But uh, the other uh, use case is at least as much important. Uh, it's message routing. For example, makes, making sure that all your authentication related events uh, reach your same systems. There are many possibilities for uh, Filtering, it can be based on the uh, message content, various uh, parameters. You can use comparisons, wildcards, uh, and many different kinds of filtering functions. And best of all, you can combine uh, all of these uh, using Boolean operators, creating really, really complex filters. Uh, and finally, you have to store your log messages somewhere. Uh, it's either locally or send, sending to, a, uh, to another uh, f uh, remote destination. So you can send your uh, log messages to various SIEM systems, store your log messages to SQL databases or big data systems like Hadoop, uh, various document stores like Elasticsearch or MongoDB, or message queuing systems like Kafka. And uh, it's not mentioned here, but uh, you can also extend uh, on the uh, syslog engine on the destina destination side using Java and Python as well. Mm, I wrote an uh, easy to use extension to syslog engine which allows you to send alerts to uh, lots of different uh, mm, destinations in the cloud. Let's talk a few words about uh, log messages. When it comes to syslog, uh, most of the log messages have the format of a date, a host name, and some text. The text part, uh, in many cases, uh, is an almost complete English sentence with some variable parts in it. Like, you can see uh, yet another SSH uh, login message here. It's pretty easy to read by humans, and these were designed when uh, you received just a f uh, few or few hundred log messages as, uh, a, a whole day. Uh, recently, it's uh, quite typical that uh, a, host, uh, a single host can uh, collect uh, hundreds of log messages a second, and uh, when you have a central uh, location to collect your log messages, then uh, you might receive uh, hundreds of thousands of log messages a second. That's not something to con uh, consume by a human. Uh, and it, if, if you have uh, text-based log messages, then it's pretty difficult to create alerts and reports from them. The solution for this problem is uh, structured log uh, logging. In this case, events are represented as name value pairs. For, for example, uh, the SSH login message uh, can be described as an application name, a user name, and a source IP. The good news is that SysTokenG had name value pairs inside right from the beginning. Uh, date, facility, priority, the application name, and so on, are all uh, mm, kept as name value pairs within SysTokenG. And uh, the parsers of SysLogNG can turn uh, unstructured and some of the structured data into name value pairs as well. 
many of the features uh, which uh, users uh, take for granted in SysLogNG uh, were developed during the uh, uh, SysLogNG version 3 uh, period. From those, I just want to pick a few uh, as a retrospective, uh, the disk buffer, message parsing, Python support, HTTP destination, and Kubernetes. So, uh, what, uh, what is the disk buffer? Mm. If uh, your destination is uh, not available for some reason, for the network program, or uh, your central uh, lock collector uh, needs maintenance, uh, you can uh, make sure using the disk buffer that no messages are lost. There are two kinds of disk buffer within SyslogNG. One is called normal and one is called reliable. Uh, it's, it, as it turned out, it's not the uh, best naming structure as uh, the normal disk buffer is also reliable. Uh, reliable uh, disk buffer gives some extra assurances. Uh, how, uh, on the other hand, uh, it's, uh, it also means that it can be pretty slow and resource hungry as well. So uh, normal is uh, usually pretty much okay in almost all situations. The main feature of uh, SyslogNG3 uh, was message parsing. Uh, this is uh, when uh, the original message parsing code was when uh, SyslogNG uh, version 3 was, was started. Uh, it means that creating name value pairs from interesting uh, message parts. Uh, the first uh, message parsing uh, in SyslogNG was pattern DB, which is at uh, tool to turn uh, freeform log messages like the SSH login message you, uh, you were seeing on the screen into name value pairs. But uh, we can also uh, turn a couple of structured log messages into name value pairs like CSV, JSON, XML, uh, the key value pairs, and so on. You can also combine these parsers uh, uh, into more complex parsers. Uh, there are quite a few examples in the SyslogNG configuration library. Uh, so uh, SyslogNG can parse sudo, Apache access logs, uh, Cisco log messages, which are told to be syslog messages, but, uh, but only just resemble syslog from far, from far away, and a few more uh, message formats into name value pairs. Uh, and we, we also have something called application adapters, uh, which uh, in practice means at automatic message parsing uh, when you use the system source of SyslogNG. Why name value pairs and message parsing are so important? Because uh, name value pairs help you to do a lot more precise filtering, uh, like uh, you can filter not just on authentication related log messages, but uh, you can uh, also check the username within uh, log message and create an alert within SyslogNG uh, by uh, properly parsing the log messages. It, also, uh, it can also help in uh, log storage. I mean, uh, quite a few users mentioned that uh, uh, some applications send very ver verbose log, mes log messages, but they only need a small fraction of those uh, of, of the data uh, for later analysis. And uh, when you have uh, your hosting uh, in the cloud, and uh, it really mm, it can really matter a lot in uh, pricing if you forward just. Uh, gigabytes of log messages instead of terabytes of log messages. Uh, and uh, if you have name value pairs, uh, it, uh, then it's much more easy to create reports, alerts, or dashboards later on from these log messages. Uh, Python support was also introduced uh, during the Python, uh, during the NG 3 uh, period. It was originally uh, developed for uh, destinations, but now it's practically available in all parts of SyslogNG. 
Originally, uh, it was told that yes, you can use Python for uh, proof of concept projects, but if you want to uh, do something in production, then uh, let's develop something in native C. Uh, it's not the case anymore. Uh, it's, uh, it, it is production ready. Uh, it, mm, especially knowing that uh, know, that most. Uh, users collect uh, just a few hundred messages per second, uh, and uh, Python support can scale to tens of thousands of log messages uh, a second to, uh, to parse or emit or whatever. And uh, it's easy to develop uh, Python code. There is, uh, there is no need for specialized development tools or compiling, recompiling the uh, software. Uh, and it's also uh, a lot more easy to distribute your own uh, Syslog-ng ex ex uh, extensions if it's developed in Python. Version 4 of Syslog-ng already has uh, some uh, modules which are developed in Python. Uh, one of my favorite parts of uh, Syslog-ng is the HTTP destination. Originally, it was a kind of do-it-yourself uh, thing. You can you could read documentation of a um, HTTP-based uh, API uh, and then create a destination for it. Uh, uh, but uh, soon we realized that yes, this should be packaged together uh, with Sysdog So the uh, Many uh, HTTP-based drivers are now available in the Syslog-ng configuration library. For example, um, the Elasticsearch HTT HTTP driver, many logging as a service destinations are uh, created in HTTP uh, using HTTP, Logly, Sumo Logic, uh, and so on. And you can easily create alerts uh, to various uh, chat services uh, like Slack, Telegram, uh, and uh, quite a few more um, using HTTP. If you create something interesting, uh, please uh, submit it to us, and we will bundle it with the next version of Syslog-ng. We received quite a few interesting uh, submissions already. Finally, uh, in the one of the last uh, Syslog ng 3 releases, initial Kubernetes support was added. Uh, this, uh, this one is just following uh, Kubernetes uh, log files on the file system, and uh, it was uh, later extended in version 4, as we will see. Mm. The main new feature of uh, Syslog ng 4 is uh, type support. Uh, version 4 uh, was released in last December, and it's already part of uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, and uh, it, it's also, it will also be part of OpenSUSE Leap uh, uh, 15.5. And uh, the good news is that if you keep your version 3 configuration, it is fully backwards compatible. So you do not have to change anything in the configuration, and it will work as is. Uh, but of course, that also means that you cannot make use of the version 4 uh, features. Mm. As I mentioned, the main new feature is time, type support. So uh, name, name value pairs are no more just a name and a value, but you can also as associate a type with, the, with them. Uh, so, uh, type information from the JSON parser or the pattern DB parsers are no more lost, and uh, you can uh, also create your own rules to add type information to name value pairs. What is it good for? You can use uh, this uh, type information in comparisons, and uh, most of the output is now also type aware. Uh, list handling also improved quite a lot uh, in Syslog ng4. Uh, I will uh, demonstrate these ch changes using uh, 
JSON formatted log messages uh, from SU219. Uh, Uh, so, uh, what what is what exactly what is this uh, type support exactly? Uh, Syslog ng still stores of uh, st uh, st still stores name value pairs as text, as it's a Syslog implementation, uh, and Syslog is about text messages. On the other hand, uh, if you parse uh, Uh, log messages using uh, the JSON or the button DB parsers. Uh, type information is now stored together uh, with uh, name value pairs. Uh, you can also set this uh, manually. Uh, why is it important? For example, if you want to do uh, numerical comparisons, then uh, 1.0 is no more equal with 1.1. Uh, This, this was a pro, uh, numerical comparisons didn't really work nicely earlier, uh, but with proper type support, it is now possible. Uh, and here you can see a Syslog ng configuration I used for testing. Uh, you can see uh, the typical uh, config that it starts with a version number. You will learn why is it important. Uh, then uh, we define a source. Uh, the, it, it, we are using the system source, which means that no matter on which operating system we are, uh, it will collect uh, system log messages. Uh, then we write, uh, and, and those log messages are also parsed. Uh, in this case, uh, we, work in, we are working with sudo log messages, and those are automatically parsed by uh, Syslog ng. That's why you do not see a sudo parser uh, on this slide. Uh, we write uh, the original log message uh, to var log messages, but we also have a second log path uh, here. We filter uh, sudo log messages and uh, then write the results uh, to a JSON-formatted uh, text file, which means that uh, we recreate uh, the um, log message. Uh, we parse the log message automatically and then recreate the very same log message uh, in JSON format uh, in Syslog ng. Here we see how the original uh, sudo log message uh, looks like. Um, the important par parts here, you can see that the original log message uh, has proper uh, integers, where it has numbers, which means that they are not in quotes. Anything uh, in quotation marks is Uh, which means that uh, in JSON that, it, that it's a, a uh, string or text type. Uh, so we see that uh, the original is an integer, and here we also have a list. So let's see uh, what happens uh, if we parse it in syslog ng3 and try to recreate the JSON formatted log message, log message uh, from name value pairs. Uh, As you can see, the uh, um, list is not a proper list anymore. And if you look at the uh, integers, they are in uh, quotation marks, meaning that uh, they were treated by Syslog ng as uh, string instead of integers. It's easier to see this way that uh, here, uh, Uh, inter the integer is quoted, and uh, the uh, list is uh, practically a long string. Now uh, let's update uh, to uh, Syslog ng version 4. If we uh, check uh, our configuration, we will get a couple of uh, warnings that uh, the configuration version is old, we should upgrade it to version 4.1, and that uh, mm, 
the way the JSON template is working is changed, and we need to uh, add uh, some additional arguments uh, if we want the old behavior. But of course, we want to see how it looks like uh, after uh, upgrading to version 4. So uh, we changed the version uh, string to version 4. This is what tells SystemNG that yes, we want uh, to use the new features. And uh, then uh, here is the very same uh, JSON formatted uh, sudo uh, log message as parsed and reconstru reconstructed by SystemNG. As you can see, we have now a proper list and the integers are no more quoted, so they, are tre they were treated as integers by SysTokNG and not as uh, strings. Let's format it to make it even more visible. Here we can see a proper list and uh, proper integers. Uh, how does type support uh, affect you? Uh, First of all, if you uh, work with the default configuration within uh, uh, OpenSUSE, then uh, there is uh, very little change. As, we, as that configuration uh, collects, uh, doesn't parse log, uh, log messages, just simply filters them and store them, stores them into text files. Uh, but uh, if you use PatternDB or the G, uh, JSON parser, and you might use the JSON parser even if you are not aware of it, I mean, for example, for the JSON formatted sudo log messages, then uh, you might see some changes. Uh, some of the destinations might uh, reject or unable to process uh, the log messages uh, with proper type information. I mean, uh, previously they uh, received uh, text uh, fields in name value pairs, then uh, they expect that they, uh, they will receive text uh, data uh, uh, in the future as well. Uh, it, it could also mean that your alerts or reports or dashboards do not work exactly the same way as earlier. As uh, previously they received text and now they receive proper uh, integers or floating points or booleans or lists. Uh, the good news is that in most cases it also means that previously it didn't work correctly and now it can work correctly. Mm. For example, uh, Type, uh, type uh, information can help you uh, with comparisons. Uh, in Cisco uh, 3, there were two sets of uh, operators for comparisons, one for strings and one for numbers. But uh, the uh, comparison operators for numbers only worked for integers. Uh, it didn't work for floating point numbers. And you had to enclose all values in quotes. It was easy to uh, use the wrong operator and get unexpected results uh, in the end. For example, uh, this is what I mentioned, uh, that uh, reading uh, Apache access logs, you can easily parse these log messages, create name, name value pairs, for, exa for example, the HTTP uh, version information. But here, if you uh, try to compare uh, the version information, uh, then uh, 1.0 uh, was equal to 1.1 1 .1, uh, as well, as uh, it, uh, the comparison could only deal uh, with the integer part. Uh, Version 4 of SyslogNG only has one set of com comparison operators, and it works for uh, all of the different types. Here, if the mm, mm, data is uh, enclosed in quotes, 
uh, then uh, the type is uh, uh, string. Otherwise, uh, it tries to figure out uh, the type if it's uh, a boolean, an integer, or a floating point number. So uh, the very same comparison, if you use uh, it in Syslogangy version 4, uh, will work properly as expected. And there were a number of changes uh, in Python support as well. Um, the good news is that as long as you keep uh, the first line, uh, the version string of, uh, of the configuration uh, in version 3, uh, then uh, all of your Python scripts will work without touching them at all. On the other hand, if you want to use version 4 features, uh, you also need to re rewrite uh, your Python scripts a bit. Uh, luckily, not too much. Uh, you need a few additional include, and uh, object declarations have to be changed. Uh, another new uh, feature of uh, Python support that you can use uh, virtualenv with uh, syslogng. Of course, uh, for uh, official distro packages, uh, I uh, use the system provided Python packages as uh, normally nobody wants to uh, download uh, external uh, Python code. Um, but uh, <coughs> Unofficial packages use, can use uh, virtualenv, and uh, also when uh, dependencies are missing from the distro, you can change uh, the configuration to use uh, virtualenv uh, on your distro. Uh, here are uh, the changes in, in how um, you write your Python code. On the left-hand side, you can see version three, uh, and on the right-hand side, uh, you see you can see that there is an additional uh, import, and uh, the class definition is uh, changed a bit, little bit. Uh, version th uh, three of uh, Syslogng could already collect uh, log messages from Kubernetes. Version 4 uh, added uh, support for Kubernetes uh, log enrichment. Uh, this is implemented in Python. Uh, it, is uses, it, is, it is using the uh, Kubernetes API to fetch uh, pod information uh, to enrich uh, log messages. And uh, it can also cache information to make sure that uh, there is a the performance is, is not too bad. <clears throat> if you want to learn more about uh, version four of Cisco Genji, uh, you should check the release notes. Uh, and for uh, Python support related changes, we have a separate documentation on GitHub as well. Uh, documentation is not yet ready, but hopefully that will also follow soon. So what is next in the development of uh, Cisco uh, Right now, the main focus of development is monitoring support. Uh, one of the first changes after the uh, 4.0 release was adding Prometheus compatible uh, data structures uh, to uh, Cisco Genji statistics. And, uh, the past two releases uh, added uh, a lot more parameters which can be monitored uh, within Syslog-ng. So uh, it's not just uh, the number of messages, but also the various caches and, and so on, what you can uh, disbuffer, what you can follow uh, in, in the uh, various uh, Syslogng statistics. So let me give you a quick summary uh, what I talked about. Uh, most of the Syslogng features uh, we know arrived during the uh, version 3 series. 
version 4 added type support to name value pairs, a lot more flexible Python support, and Kubernetes uh, log enrichment. And currently, the main focus of development is uh, adding improved and Prometheus compatible uh, monitoring support. Uh, thank you for your attention, and do you have any questions? Hello? Yeah. So, um, does uh, Syslog NG has some uh, um, web UI allowing to review logs, or is there maybe you can recommend some third parties which allow to? Uh, Syslog NG doesn't have itself a web UI. Uh, it is uh, mostly used as a central log collector, and it routes to many uh, different. Uh, Software, so uh, it, it it it's mainly used as a log management layer. So uh, man, most uh, or organizations have multiple places where they need logs. They collect logs in Splunk, in Elasticsearch, in uh, ArcSight, in whatever. Uh, uh, but uh, all of these need a specific set of the log messages. So syslogng is normally used to collect all of uh, all of the log messages as an organization needs, and then routes to the different software which does further analysis. Yeah, but what? How you see it? The further analysis. What with what I should do it? So I export it to MongoDB or I export it to Kafka, and then what? I just doing using. Uh, um, regular Kafka uh, querying of, of, yeah, of the uh, data? Yes. Or I would expect some some tool which know that it's not just data, it's not just table with fields, but it's log messages which, uh, yeah, which uh, there is, I don't know, log level and uh, so on and so on. So you you don't know anything uh, like this? Many, many of our users use Splunk, the free version, uh, in small, oh. info, small organizations, organizations uh, the commercial for large ones. Uh, that's mm -hmm. one of them. Uh, mm, then uh, Elasticsearch uh, with Kibana is an, uh, another very popular destination. Uh, all of these use the HTTP destination. Then uh, um, MongoDB is also used. Okay, there uh, it yes, it, it, there it doesn't have any specific. I mean, uh, log, uh, log management specific features, but uh, um, it has tools to uh, access the search in the database and. Uh, uh, the MongoDB destination is uh, pretty popular as well, as far as I know. Uh, it allows uh, to store name value pairs just like Elasticsearch, so uh, you can easily create reports uh, from the log messages. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Hi. Uh, I have two questions. One of this is uh, when uh, the Prometheus uh, when it's supposed to uh, put the new Prometheus uh, capabilities, when are we waiting for Prometheus? And the second one is, uh, since we're working with Prometheus and SRE solutions, also uh, Syslog, it's mostly used on Splunk, Kibana. Uh, I've used the version three on Kibana. Uh, but uh, if I wanna change the configuration for Syslog for uh, certain uh, servers, for example, three, uh, uh, I have 10 servers that I want to manage uh, who logs into to those servers and for some other servers I have some other configuration for syslog. Uh, how can I centralize the, the syslog configuration so I push it from git from some CI or stuff and make it as DevOps as possible? Uh, 
Personally, I do not use any of the central management solutions as normally I only have uh, single test machines. I'm working in research, research and development and no more in operations. But uh, I'm aware that uh, there are modules in Ansible, uh, in SALT, in so most of the popular uh, configuration management systems have support for SysLogNG. Uh, and what was the other part of the question? Prometheus, when Prometheus. are we waiting for? Uh, Is there any assumption on date when can we use the uh, no, as far, uh, as far as I know, uh, the data format is already, uh, well, there are some unofficial uh, uh, solutions already for Prometheus. Uh, uh, I can, so I, I blogged about it a couple of years ago, so it's nothing recent, but should work. And uh, Recent changes in Cisco can make it easier. Uh, I'm not sure if the actual exporter is uh, we, when will it arrive, but the data format is my, is already a lot closer to what Prometheus expects. The pre previously, the statistics of uh, Cisco can was not directly in the format available for Prometheus. It is now uh, directly useful, but uh, still an export exporter is needed. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Okay, then thank you.